then like a galactic vagina opens up in the sky and blows white wisps over the land. Hey, guys, how do you want to depict the angel of death in our animated children's movie? I was thinking glow in the dark, come, come. I was going to say come too. Could we get, like, a, like if the ghost of all the come could do all the murdering. We are really synced up today on ideas. I'm loving this. Put it in the movie for children. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because they won't stop making them. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Let my people go. Let's do this. All right. Very excited. <laughs> and sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm fantastic, Noah. Are you really? Our listener base has been explained to me. The last puzzle piece has fallen into place. <laughs> I understand so much that I didn't understand before. All right. So to get us there, tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched something that apparently Eli learned a lot from. I'm very interested to see how that works. We watched The Prince of Egypt. It's an animated movie for kids about genocide. Like just that. Mm -hmm. but, but don't worry. It's a musical, too, so it is tasteful. A tasteful <laughs> infanticide film. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you can't believe the adult stuff they snuck into Disney movies of our childhood, just wait till you see what the fuck DreamWorks was <laughs> up to. <laughs> okay, let me explain. Okay, people have asked us to do this movie for years. And for years, I must admit, I ignored them. I was like... Isn't that like a major animated movie? Like someone's going to be like, oh, yeah. And then Moses does it. Like, I'm not, I'm not interested in that. I watched this movie a gawk. Yeah. A gawk. One of my last notes about this movie is I would like to apologize to every listener I ever thought was a weirdo. You watched this movie as a kid. You turned out fine. Yeah. No, I am fucking after watching this, I am flabbergasted by how many people wrote to us to say, oh, good luck finding any fault with that cinematic masterpiece. I think you guys have bit <laughs> off more than you can chew. Uh, uh, apparently, a large contingent of our audience, either A, actually likes this movie or I and I think far more likely B, haven't seen it for decades and have a Heath with Boondock Saints type relationship going on. That makes sense. <laughs> I feel like that's probably it. A lot of people said they loved this. That was weird. I got to experience this live in person. My wife loved this movie as a little girl. In fact, she loved it so much that she tried growing up atheist. She like tried to believe in God afterwards. And she was like, this is stupid. So she was like, hey, like, I know I usually don't care. I want to watch this one with you. And I just got to my joy throughout this film was just turning to her to be like and you loved this movie she said shut up i was that's like <laughs> that's anna's musically talented this is yeah. the worst you so just that bad. alone yeah makes this terrible so fucking bad all right so is there anything you guys want to nominate it for being the best at being the worst at yeah i'm gonna go with a worst worst actually worst worst animation of ethnicity okay Ooh. Well, and also just the choice of cast, but also I'll, I'll focus on the animation. There's so many things this could be. <laughs> Ethnicity wise, it's just really problematic throughout, but it's them animating what they believe to be what Egyptian people would look like in ancient Egypt time where, you know, Bible time, early Bible times, Moses times, and also what they think Jewish people would look like. And they seem to think it's like white mm -hmm. and black. Yep. Like those are the two things. <laughs> but it's really problematic because they have like a, t it seems like some of the animated characters have blackface on. I don't even know exactly <laughs> what that means, <laughs> mm -hmm. but it's really problematic. Well, when you hear the white voices coming out of them, yeah, that's, uh, that's easy to see. There's also some noses in this movie that would like give a German cartoonist during World War II pause. <laughs> <laughs> no, exactly. All right. So, I was going to go with, and I know what a big statement this is given what we've watched in the past. I was going to go with best, worst use of talent, right? The all-star cast in this film is incredible, but over and over again, it'll be like, oh, is that Helen Mirren for those four lines until someone else comes in and sings a song with her character? Yeah. Weird. You know how like 
the South Park guys when they were starting early on would get like George Clooney to do meow for a cat. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's that the animated film. Exactly. And I'm, of course, going to go with best worst. Now is a good time for a musical number. <laughs> <laughs> There will be no moment in this movie where you go, well, of course, they wouldn't have a song now that a character won't immediately be like, killing the baby. Yes. <laughs> okay. I think that's actually the name. That of might one actually of the be one of the yeah. songs. Yeah. All right. Well, this is based on the Bible, which means there's a lot of baby murder coming up in this episode. So we're going to take a quick break and let you get in the right headspace for that. But when we come back, we'll dive into all the inexplicable cameos of the Prince of Egypt. You almost got it, buddy. I know. I know. Hey, Eli, what's um, what's Noah doing there? Oh, I gave him a rubber hot pocket, and he's been trying to eat it for like 40 minutes. Um, why? Why would you do that? Oh, well, ever since he got his dentures, he's had trouble tearing food, which means... He, he doesn't know it's rubber? Doesn't know it's rubber. Exactly. And it's also a good reminder that good health starts with good habits. Quip makes it easy by delivering all the oral care essentials you need to care for your mouth. What's Quip? Eli, are you sure this is the pepperoni one? Definitely the pepperoni one, buddy. The Quip electric toothbrush is loved by over 7 million mouths and has timed sonic vibrations with 30-second pulses to guide a dentist-recommended two-minute clean, a lightweight and sleek design for adults and kids with no wires or bulky charger to weigh you down. It also has a multi-use travel cover that doubles as a mirror mount for less clutter. It has reusable handles and a range of sleek metal hues, including best-selling all black and all pink, as well as bright plastic colors, sure to make a pop to your bathroom counter. So they just sell toothbrushes? Or? Heck no, they don't. Okay. In addition to brush heads, Quip also delivers fresh floss, toothpaste, mouthwash, and gum refills every three months from $5. Shipping is free, so you can save money and skip the hustle and bustle of in-store shopping. All right, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? If you go to getquip.com slash awful right now, you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash awful. Spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash awful. Quip, the good habits company. Okay, but isn't giving Noah a rubber hot pocket like kind of mean? Are you kidding? This has kept him busy all morning. I almost got it. See? Yeah. Okay, that's fair. Seems happy. Right? Does he? All right, everybody, welcome to the first ever cast meeting for the Prince of Egypt. All I right. see. Um, sorry, question? Yes, Val Kilmer, who will be paying both Moses and God, by the way. Yeah, yeah, very excited. Um, just real quick, though, um, are we all white? Uh, are we all white? Yes, I think we are. Like, the entire cast of this movie that's titled, as you mentioned, the Prince of Egypt, I'm pretty sure it's an all-white cast. I see Steve Martin, Martin Short, Sandy Bullock, Patrick Stewart. Like, Hello! All white people. Yeah. Is there any one person of color in this movie about the Prince of Egypt? Do we have one? Uh, um, we, we, uh, we got Danny Glover for a couple lines in the second half. Oh, okay, that's fine then. I loved him in Happy Gilmore. Right? So good. Woke. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up basically apologizing for how much they had to fuck with the source material to get a G rating on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Title card is like, this is the Exodus story. Believe it or not, we made it less genocide-y. Sorry about that? Yes! <laughs> <laughs> it also says, we believe this film is true to the essence of Values and integrity of Exodus. Integrity? Ru yeah. What? <laughs> Do they have integrity in that book? <laughs> so, not a penny more or a penny yeah, less what, for raping happening? my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> also, I got a fun piece of trivia here from Amazon. Mm -hmm. So, apparently, the entire cast and production team had a big fight over who would be the voice of God because they have really? some, like, you know, famous actors and all of them were like, I want to be the voice of God. So they got to this big fight and they eventually landed on having everyone do it and like alternate back and forth and rotate through and whisper all the God lines so that they could sort of make them sound similar. And eventually they realized that's fucking dumb. 
and they had Val Kilmer do it. Right. Yeah. So he's the one. But you can hear the whispers <laughs> at certain moments. But Val Kilmer is also Moses. Yep. Right. So when he's talking to God, it becomes a fucking Bible piece theater <laughs> sketch. <laughs> yeah. It's the only character who shouldn't have done the God voice. <laughs> yes, right. That absolutely <laughs> couldn't do the God voice. Yeah. To be fair, though. If it had been Patrick Stewart, it would have been weirder because it would have been like, wait, the Pharaoh is God? Yeah. <laughs> At one point, Moses and God are harmonizing in a song. Val Kilmer's doing some kind of like throat singing move to make it all. Oh, Jesus. Val Kilmer's drinking a big glass of water while the scene's going on. Huh? <laughs> huh? Now it's wine. All right. So, yeah. So we, we start in on some ahistorical enslaved Jews in Egypt building pyramids with the hopes of embarrassing historically impaired Republicans later, I guess. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of whipping in this children's movie, like right away. We open on whipping, yeah. And there's a song. This is a song, the first inappropriate moment for a song where they're basically singing like, yo, God, this was not the fucking deal, man. <laughs> Whip it real good. Yeah. <laughs> I also need to point out, like we could talk this entire review for how bad this music is. Everything in this movie feels like something Sondheim gave up on halfway through the shower. Yes. Right? Like, um, <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, but, nah, that's bullshit. Oh, that's <laughs> I'm just gonna. I had it down as Disney B side stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. So th then we, we, we resolve this into Moses's mom secreting away baby Moses, right? Cause the Pharaoh is out to kill all the Jewish babies. Right. And we're seeing the whipping and the child murder in the background in the second scene of this children's movie. Yep. We go straight from whipping to baby murder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's quick. It's quick. Yeah. <laughs> and mom has a song for that, too. By yes. The way. <laughs> yes. She's like, hey, kids, there's a lot. We're slaves. There's a lot of murdery shit going. This sucks here. I have a song, though. Yeah. <laughs> she sings that information to them. Well, and what's weird is that like she's sneaking around while she's singing it. And I'm just like, shut up, though. They can hear you. They're right behind you. <laughs> I wanted the kids to be like, hey, mom, can you just talk it instead of that? Like, it's hard to catch lyrics in a song sometimes. I feel like we need this information. Will you sing it when we get home? <laughs> okay. And this never occurred to me until literally watching this movie. But putting your baby in a basket in a river is just killing your baby with extra steps. Yes. Right. <laughs> What did she think was going to happen? The baby was going to be a pirate? <laughs> I wanted one of the other kids to object to this, too. Be like, hey, can we get in a fucking basket and escape slavery, too? <laughs> yeah. No, just Moses for some reason. Go fuck yourself. Right. That's what happens. So, yeah, so she she puts Moses in his little basket, sends him down the river. He has just a comical, like, Rube Goldbergian series of adventures in the basket. Yeah, I wanted so bad when they first launch it. It's like a huge deal. I wanted the basket to get like stuck in a reed on the side and just be like, <laughs> so, oh, we got to push it. Immediately gets picked up by an Egyptian. Oh, there's this great moment where it's like he floats underneath a bunch of monkeys and we realize how close we came to a religion where Moses was raised by the monkeys. Yes. Such a That's better an religion. Excellent story. So much They cool. diverted right here. You had a shot. Even the lice plague makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Could have been a good musical. And then there's like, crocodiles and hippos trying to chomp him. At this point, I wrote in my notes, honestly, a baby in a basket has to be the crocodile version of like an eel avocado roll, right? Like, you gotta be super psyched for that. <laughs> well, and as he's getting jostled around, I'm like, he would be mush. He's got a little baby skull. This is a newborn baby. Anyway, but somehow he safely floats into the chamber where Pharaoh's daughter is. Yeah. How does that happen? I had no idea. What? <laughs> It is the Nile, the Nile River. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. The Nile River goes straight to a palace entrance. Like it's a it water ends. park in Vegas and it just goes right <laughs> up to it. <laughs> so. Flash cut to them being like, hey, Dave, I really appreciate you building this entrance thing. You know, all the shit in the country now floats to my front door, right? Literally all right. so, yeah. the shit. You ever get anything cool, though? <laughs> you know, this thing floods a lot, right? So, yeah, but and, and also it's really weird. This is one that hadn't occurred to me till I actually watch it play out. It's really weird to like find a baby in a basket and go, sweet score. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Th this one at the palace is like, found a river, baby. We keep it now. <laughs> this is mine. Yes. What the fuck? And of course, her actual kid, Ramsey, is like, but you still love me too, right? And, and mom is like, sure, Rambo, whatever. I just, you know, <laughs> also love this one. 
just like when every other second child comes along. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, so then we get Moses and Ramsey. We we cut to them being adults. Moses and Ramsey's are on chariots, being wacky, right? Having shenanigans. Yeah, a lot of joshing around trying to murder each other with horses. Like yeah, a lot of do. vehicular homicide attempts in their gentle ribbing. <laughs> so yeah, so then they go on like a hot rod chariot race with each other. Yeah, really wanted the horses to take them to HR for all these dangerous shenanigans. Yeah. It's pretty messed up. They're doing crazy stuff that would kill the horses and them. I feel like horses would just stop and be like, no. <laughs> yeah, not, right. I'm not <laughs> doing this one. What are you talking about? What do you mean drift, Alan? You drift. <laughs> Get off. <laughs> so, yeah, and of course, this is the, they, they do a little gag here where Moses' shenanigans are the reason that the Sphinx is missing its nose, guys. It's like an Aesop's fable, only about a story that people kill each other over. It's like I say, it's, it explains it all. Cool. Honestly, if the Bible had the Sphinx lost its nose when Moses and his friend the Pharaoh were doing chariot parkour, it improves the book. Now, that's because all changes improve the Bible, but that's, that is one that does improve no, the No, you're Bible. right. You're right. I'm with you. So, yeah, but of course, all of their shenanigans caused this wall to collapse, and there's like a sand avalanche, and it buries a bunch of human beings who would then just die, right? There would be hundreds and hundreds of pounds of sand on top of them, this huge crushing weight and no air to draw into their lungs. Right, but like slapstick die. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like uh, DreamWorks kids movie slapstick die. Exactly. Yeah. No one dies if while they're being buried alive, you go, whoa, yeah. <laughs> I, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. So, but then we cut to Pharaoh fucking Patrick Stewart chewing them out for their chariot race. Mm -hmm. And we all just sit there and go like, that's an awful black character for that white actor to be playing. <laughs> this, all of our notes throughout the movie are like another white actor. We are running out of time. DreamWorks. <laughs> All I was thinking about here, because it's it's the the dad, the pharaoh, scolding them for like you know fucking up the nose of the sphinx. All I could think of was like, yeah, I'd be in so much trouble if a very small sculpture got slightly chipped by me. Yeah, my dad would be. Oh yeah, so much worse than the pharaoh right now. Absolutely. But Ramses is all pissed because he got chewed out because Moses got him in trouble, so he wanders off, and we get like Moses doing the whole going to soda. You know, we did, we get that <laughs> in the next scene. Are you mad? Yeah. Ramses. Ramses. Ramses, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and as Ramses is saying, well, you know, the problem, Moses, is that you always get me in trouble by doing pointless shenanigans. Moses is doing some kind of wine-based prank shenanigans where he dumps stuff on people. Okay, but it's not even like a prank. He's just, he's like listening to his friend be like, I don't know, I feel like you're really sabotaging. He's just like, one second, I got to pour this shit on people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. He, he he fills up a, a bag with the wine from their thing of wine, right? And then he mm -hmm. drops it down. Mm. I didn't do this with wine because, you know, why waste wine? But like giant garbage bag that you fill with water and then drop from multiple stories onto somebody oh, yeah, down yeah. below it is a really fun game. It's fun for everybody. Yeah, no, everybody enjoys that on, uh, on all ends. The person who gets hit goes from completely dry to completely wet in zero seconds. And it's yeah. crazy. Yep. Interesting. And your claim is that everybody enjoys having everyone that happen involved. to them. Everyone drunk at college enjoys this. Yes. Okay. So, and and of course, the, the victims of his wine prank are Pharaoh's yes men. This is Hotep and Hoy, or Steve Martin and Martin Short. Okay. Can I just take an aside to talk about these characters for a second? It's very clear that they were meant to be the comic relief, and then they accidentally never wrote a single moment of comedy for these no. two characters. No, you have these two brilliant comic actors, and you give them absolutely nothing to do ever. They even have a song later together, and there are no jokes in it. Yep. Insane. Yeah. So, but of course, the, so they do their wine dump thing and then Moses and Ramses is like, oh, I'm going to get serious and I'm not going to get in trouble anymore. And uh, Moses is like, oh, should I not mention then that we're late for the banquet? And then they have to run to the banquet. <laughs> really wanted like a a back to the futuresque beginning montage of him like skateboarding across a bunch <laughs> of slings. <laughs> We basically just got that with chariots, Eli. Yeah, we did. Yeah, to be fair. Yeah. So, okay. So they get to the banquet and they're late and they're in trouble. But 
Steve Martin and Martin Short have a sex slave gift for Ramses. A sex slave comedy beat, my friend. Yep, that's what we got going on here. They're like, oh, don't you have a gift for our son? And he's like, sure do. Pulls aside this sheet and it's like a kidnapped lady on a camel. Okay, I feel like they were hedging it there, right? <laughs> like, the guys were like, congratulations on being whatever prince of something. We got you a lady sex slave or camel, whichever you lean toward. <laughs> you Just tell me prince. what you want to have sex with. Both? Yeah, so... <laughs> But yeah, but so this is Zipra, right? Who will eventually be Moses's wife. We're only going to do the one wife in this one. And she's fighting back and they're really playing it for laughs, right? They're really sure this is a yuck fest. Yeah. Well, it's the classic. It's the feminist sex slave resisting the whole day. <laughs> that's, that's fun. Ooh, it's funny. Woof. Fuck. <laughs> this is a kid's movie. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, Moses subdues her by hilariously dropping her in water and then she, as she wanders off he's like well i'm just kind of smitten with that sex slave now yep so that's their that this is their meat cute in this film <laughs> yep. yeah this is the, i literally wrote i literally wrote in my notes the movie thinks that's a meat cute <laughs> <laughs> so yeah okay and so yeah and so of course all the palace guards are like oh moses seems to like her take her to moses's room right which implies that they've brought sex slaves to his room before. I'm just going to point that out. It sure does. It sure does. No illusions. So, okay. So that night, Moses returns to his chamber to presumably fuck his new sex slave. Yeah. This is the comedy. The comedy beat was like, I'll be raping her later. Hi, nine-year-olds and below that this movie is recommended <laughs> for. So, yeah. So he gets to his bedchamber, but she isn't there. She has escaped and left her guard tied up as a feminine sexy silhouette on his bed. Seems like a lot of effort when he's just going to pull back the curtain anyway. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. A good reveal and everything, but you're not even there to see it. What did they gain in that five seconds while he was walking to the curtain? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, not clear. Also, another thing that's unclear is that she's she's tied this guy up with about 87 feet of rope. He had a couple of dogs. She's tied them up with rope as well. And then she tied bed sheets together to climb out the window. I'm like, you had so much rope. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. All right. Well, I, I really origamied this guy up to make him look like a sexy lady. It'd feel weird to just like, <laughs> oh, I'm going to undo it and take your wrist. So, yeah, but but then she sneaks out and Moses sees her sneaking away and actually helps her by distracting the guards. Right. Because he's a good guy. A good sex <laughs> slave owner. Yeah. Whew. So she she sneaks away and he runs after her. Right. Because he's a good stalker. He's a happy stalker, I guess. Yeah. But as he's doing so, he accidentally runs into his own brother and sister all grown up. This is Miriam and Aaron. Played by Sandra Bullock and Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. And this is just such an... Well, first of all, we have to talk about how offensive the Jewish noses they've put on these <laughs> cartoons is. These are some long and wide noses they've put on these cartoons, my friends. But this is such a clumsy scene because Sandra Bullock slash Jewish sister is like, oh, there you are. Hey, you're our brother. Do you believe me right away? Right, right. And he's like, no, I don't. And Aaron is like, oh, well, since we could get executed for implying otherwise, I guess we shouldn't imply otherwise. And she's like, fuck you. I've already let the cat out of the bag. We're going all in. <laughs> I am doubling down on this. Yeah. And then, and then she sings the Jew mom putting you in the basket lullaby. Yep. Which he recognizes. He was presumably days old. Right. When he heard that. <laughs> so that means that either mom kept singing the I'm putting my baby in a basket lullaby for years afterwards so that the family knew it. Or she always had a putting the baby in the basket lullaby and it was relevant <laughs> that one time. I'm just more impressed that he remembers the damn thing. Yeah. And she must have like sung it from out his window or something. Maybe this movie's a Scientology movie as well as a Jewish movie. Yeah. He remembers it from the womb. But that's when he realizes that he is actually a Jew and the, the son of a slave. And so he runs off and we get this like 
out of breath song that he sings about how it can't be true. Yeah, he's in denial. We we get fuck that. No, I'm not Jewish as a song. Yep. <laughs> it's its own musical number. Also, just to talk about how sloppy the lyrics are for the music in this movie, here is a lyric from this song. If anybody doubts it, they couldn't be more wrong. <sighs> mm, and they're just all like that. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, he sings this whole song about how, no, 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 I'm a prince with ca castles and temples and shit. I have cool stuff. I'm a fucking slave. <laughs> Yeah. He literally at the end of the number, he picks up his, I guess, Jew murdering sickle and he's like, but this is good. Or is it? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. And then he he falls asleep kind of mid song. Mm -hmm. And this segues us into a hieroglyphic nightmare about the info dump that we already saw at the beginning of the movie. Right. Remember when there was infanticide? Yeah, we're going to watch that again. Right. But car cartoony extra cartoon but yeah the movie's already a cartoon yeah right. and now, now they're doing cartoon on easy mode it's right, just like yeah. construction paper now <laughs> that's like a ps5 cutscene being mr game and watch for no reason <laughs> just in the middle of the thing i that's a narrow cast that i don't mind well also so it, and he wakes up right he wakes up from this nightmare and he's like oh it can't be true and it's like well it was a dream so why would you think that it was but then he runs downstairs and he starts reading the mural that has a giant picture of babies being fed to alligators and goes holy shit this is about babies being fed to alligators <laughs> okay so just to be clear about <laughs> this palace and this mural the pharaoh in charge of this he hasn't done this yet he hasn't <laughs> murdered the babies with alligators but he was like hey artist guy i need you to paint the genocide of babies probably with alligators involved because i'm gonna do that and i need a mural to already have me doing that well, right. he's, he's already done that. That was when Moses was a baby that he did that. Yeah. Yeah. Or he did it and then he like ran back to the palace and he was like, did you guys, did you guys mural the did whole killing all those babies? <laughs> 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 like, baby kill? <laughs> yeah. Do you want us to do it like cartoony? No, do a big serious one. Do a serious. Yeah. You want us to paint your crime, your, your horrible war crime yep. that you just did? Like serious? Yep, this is what the writers of this movie think Egyptians do. So yeah, just yeah. put it in. We are Egyptian. Right. Did you finish me doing that painful diarrhea from last? I oh, did. you did. Good. I, I did. It's right there. Yep. <laughs> you can see the blood. But also, okay, so Moses wakes up and he apparently knows right where the baby is being fed to alligator mural was. Right. So that never struck him as a significant thing he should pay attention to before. <laughs> I got to ask my dad about that. Yeah. He's tough. <laughs> But Pharaoh Picard shows up just at that moment and he's like, yeah, I knew you were going to read that eventually because, you know, it's a mural on the wall of our home. It's really big. <laughs> it's got babies being fed. It's to next to me it shitting. Catches it, that's going to catch the eye. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote in my notes, I'm sorry, but there were too many Jews. Pharaoh slash us quitting working at a toy okay, store. Okay. All right. <laughs> but yeah, no, he's like, you, you got to understand they have so many spare babies. Too many spare Too babies. Too many spare babies. But he's like, so, so does that mean that I was uh, actually adopted? And the Pharaoh's like, fucking what? Why would that mean that? How does that? Those things are not even related. So he leaves. And then the, we get like the next morning, he's moping down by the river where he was found. Because <laughs> he's Jewish. So, yeah. Somebody has to come up and be like, hey, bud, you moping about finding out you're Jewish? And he's like, <laughs> yes, gone. This sucks. <laughs> you don't know what it's like. Find out you're Jewish. And then he sings a song. Yep. They sing a song. He does. That's basically sucks to be Jewish, but God might be Jewish. So, and now the song's over. That's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> ah. I really wanted the queen to be like, I mean, you kind of had to see it coming. Look how they drew you, son. That's a very Jewish. <laughs> no There's only two noses <laughs> being animated in this movie, kiddo. Well, see, I wanted her because he's like, do you know, oh, so you found me in that basket. I wanted her to do the bastard in a basket thing from There Will Be Blood because like Ooh. at least that would justify having <laughs> Helen Mirren play the fucking role. <laughs> Again, all of our notes are like and Helen Mirren. OK, not great. Not uh, not closer to Egypt, Miss Mirren. Well, and, and like most <laughs> of the cameos in this movie, she has like three lines and then a song. But the song isn't actually sung by her. Mm -mm. Right. So we get Helen Mirren for three lines that could have been like the delivered by an AI. 
It's insane. Helen Mirren and Patrick Stewart are the opposite of Egypt, right? Like, and Jeff Goldblum, that's the opposite of Egypt somehow. <laughs> right. If you clack Helen Mirren and Val Kilmer together when you're in Egypt, you go home again. <laughs> <laughs> the country just goes into a hole. It's crazy. Yeah, they transport you instantly. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. The, the nine words Helen Mirren role was enough to depress me. So we're going to pause for another quick break. But we'll be back soon with even more of The Prince of Egypt. Hi, excuse me. Do you work here at this grocery store? Oh, no. No, I'm just wearing an apron with the store's name and logo because I'm a huge fan. Okay, relax. Whatever. Look, I just checked the produce department and everything is stale and rotten. It looks like that stuff has just been sitting there for months. It has. Yeah, just like our coffee beans. Wait, grocery store coffee beans are old? Months old and stale. Oh, But most people don't know because they've never had fresh ones. So we figure why not try the same stuff with all our produce? Okay, but what about your customers that have trade coffee? What's trade coffee? Trade coffee connects customers to the freshest and best tasting coffee they've ever made at home by partnering with the country's best craft roasters. These are independent businesses from big cities and small towns. Trade customers are truly impactful for these independent roasters, often being the largest source of new growth for them. Eh, so trade coffee helps out a few independent roasters. People like variety. Actually, trade coffee's team taste tests thousands of coffees to keep 450 different kinds live and ready to ship every day. There's no one perfect coffee, but there is a perfect coffee for you. And Trade's human-powered algorithm is going to find it. In fact, Trade is so confident they'll match you right the first time that if they don't, they'll take your feedback and an actual coffee expert will work with you to send a brand new bag for free. Okay, fine. They have fresh coffee, but that's got to cost an arm and a leg, right? Not at all. Right now, Trade is offering new subscribers a total of $30 off your first order, plus free shipping, when you go to drinktrade.com slash awful. That's more than 40 cups of coffee for free. Get started by taking their quiz at drinktrade.com slash awful, and let Trade find you a coffee you'll love. That's drinktrade.com slash awful, $30 off. Ah, oh, man. Hey, Greg. What? We, we got to buy new apples. People found out about the coffee. No way. Yeah. A little too close to the sun. I know. I know. Hey, uh, Steve, Alan, you guys have a second? Hey, DreamWorks boss, what's up? Yeah, how can we help? Well, first of all, I just want to say how much I appreciate the fast turnaround you guys did on this script for the Prince of Egypt. That was good stuff. Oh, no problem. Yeah, it was always a pleasure yeah, to do. for sure. Uh, there's just one, like, teeny tiny note that I have. Oh, yeah, hit us. Okay, uh, so you feel like there's... Like a lot of murder in this children's animated film. Well, there's a lot of murder in the story. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, obviously. But but you guys have made some pretty huge changes in the story, like as it is. It seems like you could cut, I don't know, some of the murder. Like, do we need two separate baby murdering montages? Okay, well, one of them is a flashback. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Uh, but but I think people get it the first time, right? Like, they get the message of that. We don't have to see it again. I feel like we have to see it again. He's super cool. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, what about the time Moses murders a guy? We can cut that, right? Mm, that's in the Bible. Sure, yeah, but it doesn't affect the story. We could just not do that part. I really feel like we need that scene. Yeah, it's a no-go for me. We need that scene. <sighs> Fine. Okay, we'll keep the manslaughter scene, but can we at least cut the scene where the Pharaoh's kid dies? That's not in the Bible and just incredibly obviously makes God the bad guy right there. There's absolutely no reason to put it in our children's cartoon. I mean, Moses does say he's sorry. Yeah, you know, he goes in for the shoulder pat and everything. Okay, th that's not better. Okay, okay. I'll tell you what. Pharaoh can live. Oh, yeah. At the end of it all, after the firstborn dies, when Pharaoh's whole army dies, God can spit Pharaoh back up under the shore to, like, you know, show he's merciful. Mm. You think Pharaoh screaming over the death of his son and his nation is going to make God look merciful? Yeah. You know what? I'll take what I can get. Nice. I'm going to show this movie to some kids. Mess them right up. And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to open up on Ramses laying out his new imperial vision. But but Moses the whole time is noticing for the first time that being a slave kind of sucks. 
Yeah. I wrote in my notes, now that this could be me, I'm noticing this is bad. And I wrote in my notes, okay, maybe this guy is white after all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But Ramses is like, are you kidding me? Slavery is great. This is how we're going to get all of this shit built. Check it out. But Moses, he just, he can't handle watching this slave get whipped. And so he starts screaming at the guy to stop. Right. Yeah. I feel like whipping is a bad way to motivate people to do their work more quickly. Just like as a note. Yeah, especially a lot. You know, yeah, yeah. A little bit of whipping. <laughs> a little, no, yeah, right, right. One one whip here and there. But yeah, but like you whip them a bunch and it's like, well, dude, I can't carry a rock now. I'm fucking getting whipped. <laughs> so yeah, but Moses can't stand to watch it any longer. So he runs up to the guy and he tries to stop him from, from whipping the dude, but he accidentally knocks him off of this big scaffolding and kills him. Yeah, it feels like that could have just been... A prince saying, stop, I'm the prince. Stop that. Yeah. It, it felt unnecessary. Like the, a physical altercation probably did not need to happen. Also, based on their prank so far, I find it really hard to believe that they haven't already murdered someone. This this dramatic moment doesn't fly for me. I, I wrote the exact same thing. I was like, that's way fewer people than they killed with those chariot shenanigans <laughs> at the beginning. But yeah, so Moses runs away. He's like, oh, no, I've murdered a man. And Ramses chases him down. He's like, oh, come on. One little murder. I mean, what a weird. I just need to point out that's not in the Bible. What a weird thing to add to your children's movie. Like not to do. do something. Sometimes you murder people. Come on. <laughs> Everyone feels bad after their first murder, but then you sort of, you know, you internalize it. Yeah. You it. Right, right. So, but he wanders off. He's like, no, I'm a murderer now. I've, I've got to like go on to the second act. And he's like, and, and meanwhile, Ramsey's just standing behind him, yelling after him, like trying to text Heath, you know, it's very sad. <laughs> Moses! <laughs> Don't do this. I sent you a TikTok. <laughs> so, so then, okay, so we cut to Moses walking through the desert and I'm like, oh, get used to that, bro. This would be a lot of a lot of that. <laughs> and in my notes, I just wrote like, oh, God, my God. It's like we're watching the animator respond to a, well, nobody could animate every type of desert challenge. Yeah. My music note here is woman is unsure when to start singing Jewishly. It's like, <laughs> ha, ha, north. Oh, no, sorry. No. <laughs> no, okay. You Do you tell me? Will you point? Will you do like a sign? <laughs> Yeah, but he's he's giving up and he's like he allows the sandstorm to take him and but he he also doesn't die. Like apparently in this movie's universe people can just breathe sand. Yeah, there's a lot of sand breathing in this film. Yeah. But he gets he passes out or whatever and gets drugged to this watering hole by a camel. Oh my, it's the sloppiest plotting, right? He's like he passes out, he is instantly hoisted by the hair. Mm -hmm. like by a camel and then he grabs the camel which like literally bodily takes him to a watering hole so he can be fine yep <laughs> fucking camel ex machina you might as well like unscrew the cap on the camel's hump and start drinking water out of it, like James Bond with a tire <laughs> no you need a little straw like a Capri Sun it's, it's, there's a little it's, it's hard to <laughs> stabs through oh this is the worst <laughs> this is the oh. So, yeah, but then, of course, this is the part where he sees the brigands that are messing with the girls trying to get water and he chases them off with his, well, in this movie with shenanigans again, because that's really his whole shtick. He's got shenanigans. That's all he brings to the table. Yeah, It's just so sloppily plotted, right? Because the point of this scene is to get him back with the sex slave lady that he let go. Zipporah, yeah. Uh -huh. Right? So they were like, okay, what if he buries himself in the desert, then the camel brings him to a watering hole, and while he's at that watering hole, he sees her younger cousins being bullied and engages. Like, she, maybe she's just at the watering hole. We don't need 97 extra steps. That's how the Bible works. Yeah. Well, she's also not a sex slave beforehand in the Bible either, because, you know, they didn't really develop characters, especially female ones back then. But yeah, uh-huh. And then he gets knocked. He falls into the well, and then they have to get him out of the well. And then Zipper realizes it's him, so she sends him back down the well like a Persian diplomat or something. <laughs> this is Judea. <laughs> <laughs> or it will be anyway. Yeah, but so then we cut immediately from that to him in a tent being forcibly bathed by elderly women. Yes. Okay. 
I don't feel like that happens in the Bible either. <laughs> no. So this movie thinks that in Egyptian Jewish culture of this time, random nomads in the desert get a pornographic sponge bath from a team of old women in the village. A team. A squat. And they're fast, too. They're oh, like yeah. the fucking people when you pull over in it's a like race a pit car. Stop. Yeah. Right, yeah, exactly. thank you. <laughs> exactly. They've done this <laughs> before. This is not their first rodeo. Yeah, they even they even get get into the tailpipe and everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. They do. All right, yeah. Because he goes, ladies, you've already cleaned every inch of you. Whoop. Oh, maybe not. That's that's a finger in his asshole, right? Like, that's the joke we just made, right? At the very least, it's a knuckle to the perennium. <laughs> or in the pee hole. Ooh. Interesting. I'm a pee hole guy. Okay. All right. You know, Gross. What? Each his own. <laughs> you're, you're fired. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I just have to go with the joke. You know, who? Noah? So, yeah. So then. You want to say, I'm buying Heath is a pee hole guy dot com. You guys go ahead and <laughs> yeah, no, that's okay. for a that's little okay. bit. <laughs> All right, and, and in a manner that would have been no less jarring if he showed up in this fucking conversation, Danny Glover comes in. Danny Glover is going to play Jethro, that's Moses' father-in-law, for like four and a half seconds. What? As though someone was like, guys, um, we have no black actors involved with this movie right now, but the good news is you'll never guess who I saw hanging out at a Subway sandwich shop down the street. <laughs> Danny fucking guy from Happy Madison. Exactly. Let's go see if he's willing to do this. Yeah, so it's just two, two sentences of Danny Glover and then he breaks into a song, which again, it's not Danny Glover singing it, so he's he's done. It's, it's, it's the room they had on their answering machines worth of Danny Glover. Exactly. And of course, this song prompts a montage of Moses learning to be a simple shepherd and live a simple shepherd's life. And of course, Zipporah forgiving him for sexually enslaving her at one point in her life and falling in love with him. OK, the universe of what's happening to the people in the real movie and the song here was confusing to me. They're like in Egypt. They're trying to like build their tent city, but you know, they're nomads. So they're setting up the tents for the night mm -hmm. and then they're singing and the song lasts through that night into the next morning and then into the next night and then long enough for, I think, Moses and Zipporah to get married. Yeah, but that's just like at this point, that's just a negotiation with Danny Glover, right? It's just like, hey, man, I see you've got like five of these daughters. Um, yeah, and they... They kind of indicate that they have this weird moment where we see their shadows arguing with Danny Glover in a tent as though they're negotiating a price. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> You're breaking my balls. <laughs> so, yeah, but but they get married mid song and then the song fades out to Moses waking up with Zipra some morning afterwards and going like, hey, I'm going to go be a happy shepherd and, and, and love my job, as I'm sure many shepherds did. <laughs> I just love the idea that movies always portray when they have a shepherd that most of shepherding is just like chilling with sheep. <laughs> like you've got to be there. Yeah. Like he even, he walks out of his tent and he takes a deep breath. Ah, and I'm like, I bet shepherds don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's not a thing you do in that job. A couple weird ones too. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Mr. P holes has some judgment for the, <laughs> for the shit loving shepherds in our audience. <laughs> so, yeah, so, but, but he wanders off to shepherd and damn it if one of his lambs doesn't wander off in search of a plot device, right? Mm -hmm. the, the lamb is like, God, we have got to get this fucking moving going. Come on, man. man. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so he follows the sheep into a, a mysterious cave with some kind of burning bush. That isn't being consumed by the flames. There's nothing this movie does worse slash more hesitantly than very important imagery from the Bible. They're just like, I don't know, probably like a like an avatar thing. Like right? purple, <laughs> like purple, glowy. Yeah, he, he like he puts his his shepherd's crook into the fire. and He's like, huh, that didn't catch on fire. And I'm like, well, what if it did, dude? Then you wouldn't have a crook, you dumbass. Yeah. Also, this is like a big deal character in all of Judaism and Christianity, right? He's like a prophet Moses. 
He walked into a cave that had smoke coming out of it, and he was like, I'm going to check this out. That's what he's done right now. Well, and also okay. he finds a fire, and he's like, I wonder if this consumes wood. Why would you wonder? I mean, it doesn't in this case, but why would you wonder that? Is this hot to my hand if I hold it there for a long time? <laughs> no. Good. It's good it wasn't. I feel like God was having major doubts in that moment, right? He's like, oh, man, I'm about to give this guy. Is he touching Is the he fire? Okay? See if it's hot? <laughs> Fuck. Ah. I should have done the sheep. I should have done the sheep. So, yeah, so God <laughs> whispers to Moses and tells him to take off his fucking shoes. Let me see them feet. God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. By the way, I did add Moses to wikifeet.com just oh, to nice, nice. keep everything even. Excellent. Yep. Um, we'll see if it gets through approval. They've got a strict team of perverts there. <laughs> also, weird how God reveals himself here. He doesn't say like hey i'm doing a god he's just like hey hey guy who went into the smoky cave and is hurting his hand right now this pretty sweet burning bush right and moses is like who who are you that's whispering to me and he says the famous i am that i am thing mm -hmm. and moses is like what yeah that doesn't he's like, make no, any sense I'm, I'm god of the, the universe <laughs> uh, yeah no i should i'm gonna lead with that from now on <laughs> i'm god i have um i'm doing a thing i'm gonna sit <laughs> Tell you all about it. We watch God's pickup line fail. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted a flash cut to God on the phone with mystery being like, you said that would be a really solid opener, but then Moses was just like, what? And I feel like I really don't know what to do. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm back. I'm back. I talked to my guy. Do you like magic? <laughs> By any chance. Those sandals make you look fat. What? <laughs> So, yeah, so and, and Moses says, like, all right, God, what do you want with me? And he's like, a half a movie. Like, only, I really honestly not much at this point. <laughs> yeah, he's like, go free my people. I mean, they're, they're enslaved because I'm mad at them. And I can't emphasize this enough. I'm going to do this literally dozens more times. But free them. Okay. For now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> temporarily. <laughs> And he's like, I'm promoting you to head of Jewishness. And he's like, I don't know if I'm qualified for that. And God's like, I'm fucking God. Quit your bitching. All right. OK. Yeah. yeah but if you're God, like, can't you just do it? You're you're can't you just get now have them not be in slavery? Yeah, just do that. Like we're adding weeks. I'm I'm a, I'm a week and a half away, at least. <laughs> Even if I go straight there. Yeah. But God yells at him like an abusive boyfriend. I wrote yep. my notes. Yep. That's God. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so he's about to leave, and God's like, oh, oh, just so you know, I'm going to have you kill a fuck ton of children before this is over. He's like, okay, good, great. Okay, then. A line, by the way, that is accompanied by swelling strings <laughs> in a odd choice. <laughs> I'll be killing lots of babies. Da -na 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 -na. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and also God powers up his staff to full strength. We'll, we'll learn more about that uh, later, of course. So, okay, so he leaves the cave, and he, by the way, he has the stray sheep. I love that he was able to keep his head in the game enough to be like, oh, and, and a sheep, and a holy mission, and I still have a sheep out. He's walking out with the sheep. You know, statistically, it's much more likely that you just had a psychotic break in there. Okay, Larry? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, so when he goes home and he tells Zipra all about his new holy mission, and she's like, yeah, sure, man. Like, what the hell? We're not, we're not going to have you fucking look after sheep for the next 45 minutes, obviously. So they head off to Egypt. We get another slavery montage, but this time, you know, it's it's overset with Moses looking resolute. Yeah. So, so okay. So he shows up at the Pharaoh's court, and everybody's like, "Oh shit, yo, that's that's fucking Moses from the beginning of the movie." And they're like, "Right, it is the brother." Yeah, and, and he brings his wife. And I just want to point out, like, I know that this was this movie's attempt at 1990s feminism, but contextually, that's like bringing your goat to see the king. Yeah. Just FYI. Yep. I like that they had this big dance thing going in the in the palace for the pharaoh. So it's like a big party, and they just, I don't know, like knocked on the front door and were like, "We're gonna tell the pharaoh something," and they let him in. Mm -hmm. And they're walking up, and the pharaoh sees that somebody's coming. And he's like. All right, stop doing the ribbon dance. It's dumb now. Uh, oh, shit, <laughs> Moses, what up? And they have like a brothers hanging out moment. It's kind of fun. Yeah, no, yeah. they're very happy to see each other. Yeah, I wrote in my notes, big hugs. This meeting is going to go great. <laughs> so, well, and then uh, Steve Martin and Martin Short jump in and they're like, hey, remember he murdered somebody last time? And I wrote in my notes at this point. I'm like, Jesus, comically relieve something <laughs> already, guys. Please, one of you fart. 
one yeah, of you somebody part. something anything <laughs> but ramses is like yeah i'm the fucking pharaoh i forgive him for that no he didn't actually i think the thing he says is i forgive him for every crime he's ever committed or will commit <laughs> yeah I, I wrote in my notes that's gonna come in handy <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna get a lot more mileage out of that than you intended you can storm the capital if you want yeah <laughs> no no it's depressing so yeah, and he's like, actually, I I was. Uh, it's great to see you at all. It, I'm also happy to see you, but let my people leave now. Okay, <laughs> I get that they've added this relationship dynamic to try and make this more interesting, but I think rewriting history so that Moses has his hands in his pocket and is kicking at the dust at his feet <laughs> as he asks for him to let his people go kind of kills the overall effect. <laughs> This is the best. They go for like a nine beat on him eventually learning to say, let my people go in like the big Charlton Hesty way. Yeah. Hest anyway, so he's like, so just can you let my people go? I just have to wait for we just. And then there's a long pause. And Pharaoh's like, oh, you're going to. I see you have that. Are you, were you going to do like a big thing with your stick? I feel like you're. All the way powered he's up. Like, right. Sorry. Okay. Um, stick's a snake now. Yeah. <laughs> Right, and he's like, and 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 so then Pharaoh Ramses turns to Hotep and Hoy to Steve Martin and Martin Short, and he's like, you know, fucking music number them, guys. Okay, Hotep and Toy, they spent a while hoping someone would come in and challenge them to a magic battle. This is their day. Yeah, and they even have like a staff choreographed bit and everything, and yeah. Yeah, it was pretty good. I just wonder how many people came in and made requests to Pharaoh, and they were just like, uh uh, and they were like, so please. Ah, fuck. All right. No, it's, everyone put the lightning pots away. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's, well, and it's, it's hyper specific, right? Cause they, they're like, okay, I, you know, we, we don't have much, but if anybody ever comes in and turns his staff into a snake specifically, we've got a whole fucking number. Yeah. So, and, and of course, their staffs in keeping with the Bible also turn into snakes. Right. Right, they also have that power, but weaker snakes because Moses eats them. Okay, I know this is DreamWorks and not Christianity, but what's what's the working theory here? Do they have lesser god powers? Yes, that's in that's the Bible. That is the Bible. That is Christianity and Judaism. Okay, yeah, I guess that's the fucking story. Yeah. So okay, but Ramses is, takes him into the back room for a more private discussion with no musical numbers. Uh, Moses, now that you've lost the magic paddle, will you uh, join me in the other room for a whisper fight? Yeah, right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so. Okay, but we need more musical numbers for that. Like, if we're, I, we should not have capital punishment, but if we're going to have it, you should have to do a musical number. Absolutely. Ooh. You owe them, at least you should have, like, yeah, your last meal and your last musical number. That should, those should, those should go together. Yeah. So, but, and, and Moses is like, look, man, your dad killed a lot of babies. And he's like, oh, we're going to bring that up again. Every fucking time we have a fight, it's like, oh, whose dad killed the most babies? Yes, it was mine. Whatever. Okay. I also like that Pharaoh's like, I mean, I'm actually still killing people. It's, it's a pretty much slavery involves a lot of murder. But I get your point. I get your point. <laughs> <laughs> so he's like, yeah, but man, my God told me I had to come and save all the Jews. And he's like, your God sucks. And I'm like, well, in Ramsey's defense, their God is obsessed with foreskins, right? Like, so of all <laughs> yeah. the gods, he's kind of the, probably the weird one. Your God doesn't even go here. <laughs> <laughs> and then he punishes him with, and I'm really excited to hear what the fuck we think this is. Double slavery for the Jews. <laughs> He's like, now the Jews slavery will be double. <laughs> and we're like, how the heck do you, what they each own each other now too? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so. All right. Well, before things get any worse for the Jews, I suppose we should pause for one last break. But first, let me give Act to the hard sell. Will the good guy murder kids to make a rhetorical point? Will the movie sufficiently shy away from that fact? Could the movie sufficiently shy away from that fact? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the all the stuff you could possibly be interested in happens at the very end conclusion of. The Prince of Egypt. So, whose turn is it to cook tonight? Let's see, it's Tuesday, so you. Oh, right. Nice. So, what are you making? Right, um, I'm gonna... I don't... Where am I? Who are you people? 
Has this ever happened to you? Then you may suffer from sudden onset cooking dementia. You know that moment right before you start cooking where you have no idea how to cook anything in the fridge and can't remember any recipes? You call this a baracholi? Broccoli. Well, that's why there's HelloFresh. HelloFresh lets you choose from 55-plus weekly options featuring pre-proportioned, high-quality ingredients picked at peak ripeness. HelloFresh delivers fresh, quality produce from the farm to your door in less than a week, so you can savor summer flavors right from home. No decision-making required. Perhaps I can make this sew up. Do you want sew up? Soup? Are you saying soup? You can also bust out the grill on a nice warm evening and make dinner from HelloFresh's cookout collection with recipes like Melty Monterey Jack Burgers. It's true. HelloFresh sent a box to try, and I felt like an award-winning grill master. Plus, everything unloaded in a snap. Gee, real. Okay. Okay, that time you, you heard me say the word correctly. Go to HelloFresh.com slash Awful16 and use the code Awful16 for up to 16 free meals and 3 free gifts. One more time, that's HelloFresh.com slash Awful16 and use code Awful16 for up to 16 free meals and 3 free gifts. HelloFresh, America's number one meal kit. All right, dinner's ready. That is a Christmas ornament. Damn it, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm going to eat it. I'm just just saying. (laughs) Crunchy. (laughs) Your Majesty, Moses approaches. Moses, my brother, at last you have returned. Right. About that. Moses, I see your mind is troubled, but hear me when I say you have nothing to fear here. Actually... For as the morning sun and star, I do pardon you for any crime you have committed or will commit. Okay, that super knife, uh, but... For I desire all to know that this man is my brother, and what comes from his mouth is as much the law as what I say, for he is my brother. Now, <sighs> Moses, my brother, what can I do for you? I'm, uh... I'm here to take away your entire workforce under punishment of suffering and death. Oh, you are? Yeah. Greg, can I speak to you for a second? Uh, yes, Farrow. Can we make a note that for future meetings like this one, can we just get a little ask byline before we before we jump right into the meeting? Ask byline. Got it. Yep. No problem, Farrow. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. When we last left our hero, he was telling Pharaoh to let his people go, and we're going to rejoin him shamefacedly leaving while Jewish slaves throw mud at him for being so ineffective in so doing. Yeah, I get it. I once told people you couldn't convert to a culture, and I, I so I, I'm me and Moses, same back. <laughs> okay, the mud ball was funny, though, right? Mud ball was pretty funny, yeah. <laughs> Nailed him. Got fix that was a good... Fuck you, mud ball in the face. It was a good mud ball throw, yeah. Yeah. And he's like, no, no, guys, I was sent by your god, and Aaron, Jeff Goldblum's character, comes in and goes like, yeah, but our God sucks. Have you seen how bad we've got it? <laughs> to be clear, if that's true, our God made us double slaves just now. Yeah. That happened. <laughs> right. But don't worry. Aaron's sister, Jeff Goldblum's sister, comes forward and she's like, no, it's okay. We we forgive you for some reason. And can we just appreciate for a moment how messed up it is for these white actors to put it's not so bad being a slave into anyone's mouth, let alone Jews that they are not. <laughs> oh, yeah, this is Sandra Bullock telling us about how God is awesome, even though she spent her entire life enslaved. It's not that bad. <laughs> and but OK, so but Moses is like, you're right, Miriam. I will defiantly walk towards the rest of the plot. And all the other Jews are like. All right, well, I guess we're following this guy now. He's got a crook, right? <laughs> and turns into a snake and shit. They literally follow him because the rest of the movie needs to happen. They might yep. as well mumble it to themselves. Like, animated so that I'm following him. <laughs> <laughs> but it just so happens that Ramses is going by him on the river on his big pharaoh boat just in that moment. And Moses now, like, you know, whatever, pumped up by Sandra Bullock's words, gives him a really good let my people go go it's so good pharaoh might as well be on like jet skis and just splashes moses going by like "Ah!" but no he's out in the river and moses is like oh there he is i'm gonna try again guys i'm gonna try again i got this i got this i got this let my people go he can't hear me as far the river is far let 
Pharaoh, Ramsey, Ramsey, fine. Let my people go. And he finally hears him. Mm-hmm. I wanted him to pretend he didn't, but no, he yeah. hears him and responds. He does the thing where you're shouting to someone in the house and then they think you're yelling at them and you're like, no, I was just, you didn't respond. So I had to use a louder <laughs> what? voice. <laughs> what? So yeah. And then Ramsey's is like, all right, that's enough. Guards, go give him a good menacing. Okay. But it's hard to be intimidating while you wade through waist high water and someone. So the guards are like, splash, sploosh. Because you're doing that slow old ladies in a gymnastics class walk. Yeah, no, he's he's like, oh, in seven and a half minutes, I'm going to get you. And Moses is like, oh, well, God starts whispering to Moses. He's like, don't worry. I've got this very cool bloody river trick in mind. And he uses his staff. He turns the river to blood. And the guards are all like, ew, fucking gross, run. <laughs> Did you just get your fucking period? Okay. <laughs> it's it's red. The water's red. We're still going to kill you. So now in red water, we kill you, I guess. I don't know. Well, like, and you're right. The shore was closer to them. Right. Right. It's like it would be quicker for them to just run on shore if they wanted out of the bloody water. That now, now they have to old lady at a gymnastics class back. <laughs> now they step onto the shore and he's like, shit. All right, everybody, I gotta turn the sand into shit. I don't know. What's the <laughs> what's the sand? <laughs> Teeth. Ah. Huss. I didn't think this through. Bile. <laughs> and well, and Ramsey's he turns to Hotep and Hoy and he's like, Hey man, that was a pretty good trick. Can you guys do turning the water red? And they're like, Yeah, man, sure you can. And they do. Like, uh, once again, great job. Red food coloring. Yep. He just has red food coloring. That's it. Very obviously, yeah. It's probably in the tip. He probably has a false tip in the, in the but- staff thing. And it has <laughs> a little bit of oil or whatever. Ben Franklin. So Ramsey's is just like, ah, no big deal. My guys could do that too. And then, and the Jews are also like, I, you know, I mean, come on. The, 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 the other guy did red water too. Yes. So Moses has to like pump him up with his brave heart speech. It's almost Braveheart. You can hear him be like, I got too close to Braveheart. Start again. Yeah. They can never take your free. Nope. That's, I did it. I said the same thing again. That's crazy. Okay. I'm on a horse. Maybe I step off the horse. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> yeah. When he says they can never take your faith, I really wanted everyone to start booing and throwing mud again. It's just like, okay, nope, no, that's on me. That's on me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So then we cut to a quick plague montage. Mm-hmm. Right. And I just want to point out that I literally only knew this song because it's a popular TikTok sound. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's from TikTok. (laughs) So, yeah, well, and again, one of those things that doesn't really occur to you necessarily until you see it animated. But like, fuck ton of frogs is a weird plague, right? That's just a weird, it's like unpleasant, I guess. But frogs are kind of pleasant, though. It could be kind of pleasant. Yeah. Yeah. Frogs are kind of cool. Yeah. What are frogs going to do? Also, the plagues contain too many insects to animate for children. So there's far too many things in this montage of being like bugs. Oh, no. And I have different bugs. They're flying. There are other kinds of bugs. Itchy bugs and (laughs) non-itchy bugs. This is all a musical number, to be clear. A plague. It turns into a song. Musical number. (laughs) (laughs) Don't rain sulfur on my parade. (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, and it's uh, once again, it's the music is so fucking boring. Like it never rises to the level of tune. No. Ah, so, yeah. So we watch cartoon guys get boils for a while and we the song ends. We're we're like nine plagues in and Moses goes to see Ramses and he's like, man, I got one more plague, but you ain't going to like this motherfucker. You want to just fast forward to the part where you let us go? Huh? Maybe. Yeah. Also, he's in the sulking spot. Which is very important. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh, from the beginning. So he has to, like, scooch his way over to the statue to be like, Ramses, <laughs> you up there, buddy? You moping because of the play? <laughs> right. Yeah. And I just it occurs to me at this point just how much we have to fast forward through those plagues. But so as not to make Moses into the bad guy. Right. right? And they still fail. No, they, they fail. But, yeah, the more we linger on that, the harder their job gets. But the movie, in order to distract us from that, wants to have the, like, do you remember those good old times in Act 1 that we had together? Kind of a moment here. (laughs) It's such a weird, well, such a weird tonal choice. Again, you didn't have to make up this relationship, and you didn't have to triple down on it in your last act, right? Like, these mortal enemies from one of the oldest stories in historical fiction, and it's just like, 
Okay, but those pranks we pulled, am I right? Uh, <laughs> noogie hijinks, right? So fun. Right. And then Ramses Jr., the little kid, has to come in and be like, what the fuck? That guy killed tons of innocent people with plagues just now. Stop yeah, being nice. Is what are you doing? doing? That, right. He murdered a guy before that? Spoils and shit. Well, and also, so they play it from this point on like Moses was a fucking abolitionist. Right? And he's like, but slavery is wrong. I'm like, no. No, no, he just doesn't want his people to be slaves. His own book that he's going to supposedly write will have rules about how hard you're allowed to hit slaves. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, but yeah, but in, in this movie's mind, he's fucking Abraham Lincoln going up against Douglas here. Yeah. They also, they do this thing where they have Pharaoh be like, oh, well, you know what? Now I'm going to kill all the Jews. And like, I get it. You had to explain the kid killing thing for your children's animated movie. But the best they could come up with for lying was, well, we had to kill their kids before they could kill our yes! kids. Yes. I don't think the Pharaoh was planning on having the children carry out the children. Killed. <laughs> I'm going to kill your babies. No, we I'm killing a, your babies first. That's with, a weird setup. With I don't think that's babies. what happened. <laughs> yes. Right. OK, but the big mural is dumb if we don't. I'm doing that because we have the mural. <laughs> And then, yeah, right. So he's like, all right, man, 10th plague. You're bringing it on yourself. And so that he goes back and he, he has to tell everybody about the whole lamb's blood on your door bit. Mm -hmm. I just want to point out that most of my notes for the rest of the movie are, y'all watch this as kids. Are you sure? Are you sure you watch this as kids? <laughs> okay, the lamb's ah. blood thing. God says to tell everyone to put lamb's blood on their front door so that he won't murder any of the Jewish babies by accident when he plagues the firstborn of Egypt, people, right? Right. Yes. That that's not the that's not a good like. There's a lot of moving parts in that plan. It's not going to work <laughs> out, right? Yeah. There's somebody out there that doesn't have a lamb. Yeah. Also, I feel like the Egyptians that know that they've gotten you know they're nine plagues in now they're they're going to see all the Jews put lamb's blood on their door and they're going to go well, you know what better safe than sorry here. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, the Bible doesn't address whether or not that worked. Yeah. Just the heath of ancient Egypt being like, technically, <laughs> blood on my door. <laughs> so, All right, but yeah, so they do that, and then like a galactic vagina opens up in the sky and blows white wisps over the land. Hey, guys, how do you want to depict the angel of death in our animated children's movie? I was thinking glow in the dark, come, come. I was going to say come too. Could we, like, a go, like if the ghost of all the come could do all the murder. We are really synced up today on ideas. I'm loving this. Put it in the movie for children. Well, and, and so we watch, yeah, we watch this mysterious glowing sperm smoke go in and out of doors and we see like a kid's arm will fall where it's killed somebody or it'll see this the blood over the door and go like, oh, 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 guys, guys, stop. <laughs> Everybody stop. Blood, door, come on, move on. We watch the death gas like go to, it goes to their door and is like, all right, I'm, I'm magical god death gas i better check if that's lamb blood specifically <laughs> do i lick it it's lamb blood it's lamb i've blood. got no tongue i've got no nose i'm just smoky sperm holds up a picture of lamb blood puts it back into its splooge okay no no so, no, no, no you're okay, okay. <laughs> give this one a pass also I, I, look i know there's it's too late to rewrite this movie but i do want to point out that the firstborn children could also be adult right you didn't have to have yes. a baby dying montage. <laughs> yes. Or why not just kill all the children? Like, why Why just the first? Why not the second ones, too? I don't understand. So also, like, okay, this is the movie's, what, third infanticide scene? Yep. I feel like that's, that's just automatically excessive. There's got to be a rule in a movie screenwriting book somewhere that rule says... Rule of threes, people. <laughs> third that's born. not this, what they This meant. particular rule of threes is you want to have less than three child murdering montages in your movie. Yeah, no, it's fine to have one. It worked for Star Wars. You know, you have one. It worked for the, you know, the new season of Stranger Things. But after that, yeah. <laughs> after that, you're just American gun laws, right? So, yeah. <laughs> So, okay. <laughs> so then we go to the Pharaoh crying over the corpse of his dead child in this kid's cartoon. Mm -hmm. And again, I just have to point out, this is not in the Bible. Nope. Right. They gave Pharaoh 
a child to die for their children's movie. We, I can only assume in hopes of making their side look as bad as possible. Like, we talk about the secret atheist in the writer's room. This is like the secret Satanist in the writer's room. <laughs> right, so he's got the kid in his little death shroud and everything. Moses shows up. He's like, okay, this is admittedly a rough moment for an I told you so. Um, but I, I but I, so, I did. Like the last scene we shared together, I told you this was going to happen. And he's like, yeah, you, you did. Sh- shoulder pat? No. <laughs> he, tries to, he tries to do it. Do you want to get ice cream shoulder pat to the Pharaoh as he mourns his dead child? Yeah, right. But of course, Pharaoh's like, but you guys can go because, you know, what are we going to do? We're going to have 11 fucking plagues. That would just be silly. Nobody, nobody's buying that shit. So he lets the Jews go. Uh, Moses goes back and, and, and Zipra's like, great job. I, you killed an awful lot of kids, but you did it well. You did it in yeah. a good way. Zipporah has to re like readjust her tone. She's like, hey, good job. Kill- oh, you're sad. You're sad. No, oh, good job. Killing the dead babies. <laughs> but, you know, do you have like a medium song for this? That's like the positives <laughs> and the negatives and you weigh them. Yeah. Something like that. And they do. Yes, she does. Miriam had a fucking murdered child song at the ready. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Liberating slaves versus genocide of a bunch of children. Weighed it. Math checks out the song. <laughs> that's what they that's what they got here. Right. And, and it's sung to the tune of the sentences I sing to my cats when I feed them, you know, when I'm vamping <laughs> for time. Zipporah comes up and just puts her hand on Moses's shoulder. Now's not the time to make things political, okay? It's just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but of course, eventually that turns out because all the Jews are leaving Egypt at that moment. So eventually this just turns into just like a, a jaunty little tune in Hebrew, right? It gets really happy there at the end of the song. Like, babe, they have a dance in it? Yeah. In the baby genocide song? There's a <laughs> baby genocide dance, yeah. And also, like, you got to figure, like, They've got to dance in them because they were like overworked, whipped slaves yesterday. I feel like you give them a couple of days before you ask them to do a dance number. No, right. Anyway, so, OK, but the song fades away and now they're in front of the sea and they're like, OK, I guess we live in front of this sea now. Everybody break out the fucking another dance number. Is anybody going to pot this? <laughs> no, because <laughs> if no one pots this, this is a weird thing for us to have done. Yeah, right. We are, as we're about to learn, about six feet away from Egypt. <laughs> I can make it all blood. Is that helpful? <laughs> so, yeah, because just then, that just as they're like, oh, well, that's a big ass lake. Ramses and his army show up on the horizon. Yeah. And they're like, oh, fuck. Why did we sing that song and do the yeah. whole We should have just left right away. Oh, oh man. <laughs> We killed so much time with that choreography. I bought a pass to the lounge and I'm using it. I don't, you guys can go, but I'm staying. There's a lounge? They have croissants. I'm going with him. Also, in this movie, they weaponized the pillar of fire that was leading the Jews out of Egypt. Now it's a, now it's an attack weapon, a pillar of fire. And it like uh, keeps the Egyptian army at bay. But just, just long enough for dramatic effect, right? Like you, you feel like angel, like fire tornado angel and split the water angel were working together. And he kept like radioing over. Hey, did you get the water split? No. Okay. Well, you know, I'll just I'll do another. Keep, I'll keep uh, <laughs> back and forth. Let me know when the strings have done their thing. Okay. You know what? This pillar, of, they just walked around it. I put the <laughs> pillar of fire there. Ah, a lot of the army just All walked right. around it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, now, now that you mentioned it, because it's a pillar, a pillar we would, if, unless it was laying down. You know, what if I put it sideways? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, no, that's too similar to my splitting the walls of the water. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, you, did you, you're calling dibs on that, like thematically? Maybe my tornado can go back and forth like a womp. Okay. <laughs> 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 Let's put a pin in this. We'll meet back on Monday. Yeah. So, okay. And then we see where 90% of this movie's animation budget went, right? Because by the standards of 1998, this parting of the sea moment is pretty incredible. Yeah, and also by the standards of this movie, this movie has some janky ass fucking looking animation. It's very clear that they like went down to the Disney offices and they were like, Greg, do you want to draw just like nine pictures for us? (laughs) (laughs) But yeah, so Moses is like, all right, pillar of fire. It can't last for long. They're going to figure out walk around it soon. So I'll part this sea and he parts the sea and it's fucking awesome. Right. Yeah. 
Okay, I did enjoy the like giant whale swimming yes. up next to the the gap in between. <laughs> I wanted the whale just like swim into the gap and crush a bunch of people. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I, I, we've never had this before. You can, you parted it. <laughs> what? Why didn't you just have a boat? <laughs> You'd have to break so many fewer rules. Really want Neil deGrasse Tyson to pop up. You know, technically, you wouldn't be in the Red Sea. Boom! <laughs> Get out of here. Nerd. Push him into the wall. I'm going to eat him. And of course, so yeah, So, the, but just then the, the fire pillar guy is like, look, man, I've got my, I'm like 10 minutes late for my 15 and water party guy's like, oh, go fine. Go ahead. I got him more than halfway across. I'm taking my full 15. So, <laughs> yeah, the Red Sea is like a hundred yards across. Yeah, it's something ballpark. like that. Yep, yeah. that's what so they say. Yeah, afternoon, quick afternoon. Uh, it's the Sea of Reeds, though, so maybe that is like smaller. Mm. So yeah, and also, like, so Moses sees that now the army is coming, and he goes basically, he goes like, "Oh, quick, everyone, panic!" Right? <laughs> they all just start running over each other and everything. But don't worry, God is going to selectively flood them and kill all the soldiers. Right. But spoop out Pharaoh as though the children watching this would be upset at Pharaoh's death, but yeah. not all the babies. <laughs> in the fucking... What a weird line to draw. Yeah, he Darth Vader's his way out at the last second and everything. Yeah. Ah, uh, So, yeah, so the, all the Jews may get across and all of the Egyptians drown except for the Pharaoh who... Now just stands on the rock screaming Moses as though he's texting Heath. <laughs> Moses just lights a cigarette, flicks it into the sea behind him, and it blows up. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Moses will return in Moses 2. Bam, put up, bam, put up, bam, put up, bam. Yeah. And then, so he walks up to, so all the Jews hug and they celebrate. Moses walks up to Miriam and gives us a very Folgers commercial kind of moment where you're like, is he going to. Yeah. The animators, I think, forgot which one he was supposed to be. <laughs> we changed out your sister for your wife. Let's see. Let's see if he notices. Heath, Heath, what did we say about reading our Pornhub search history? You son on of a air? bitch. <laughs> so, all right. I'll murder all your firstborn children. <laughs> <laughs> so then we cut to Ramsey's on the opposite shore. He's still all pissed, you know. And then we see Moses, like, he's like, mm, I kind of feel bad about killing off that whole army of people that had no choice but to follow Pharaoh's orders, but not like super bad. Like, no, it's not good. I'm not going to let it ruin my day. Yeah, sucks to suck. Yeah. <laughs> we can do one more song, though, right? Like a genocide. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. No, we got another song. And then, like, and then we fast forward through the rest of the Exodus story. We just see him, like, with a couple of fucking pillars that have the Ten Commandments. And we're like, and then, you know, Ten Commandments. Okay. I just want to point out that technically what that ends the movie, but what happens right after the camera cuts is Moses throws those things to the ground because they're worshiping a cow. Right. Yeah, exactly. Like, and right he, away. Right away. Forces them to murder each other and force feeds them the calf. It's yeah, right. There's so much good stuff that this movie leaves out. Right. Oh, I really want that to be in the outtakes. God moons the Jews in this book. <laughs> I feel like Moses would have been a Muslim if that existed at this moment. Sure. <laughs> All right. So obviously biblical scholars have been trying to puzzle out the moral of this story for thousands of years. I don't think they've reached a consensus. Uh, do, you, do, we, do we have any guesses from the panel? But the moral of this story? Yeah. The, the, we just watched a movie. And oh, okay. Have yeah, a, yeah. Oh, oh, well, it's a math thing. It's just, you know, if you if you do a certain amount of slavery freeing, it cancels out a certain amount of baby killing. Oh, okay. All right. So this could be expressed. We, we got numbers on that now. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I was going to go with bros before Jehovah's. <laughs> <laughs> eh? No, that was good. Eh? That was very good, Eli. <laughs> And right, well, that's going to do it for our review of The Prince of Egypt. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to lure ourselves back into this trap again next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah. What if I told you I found a movie that's both Jews for Jesus and anti-abortion? That's right. We'll be watching Dying to be Heard. Oh, woof. 
All right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 361 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad free version of every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving a five star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, the scathing ADS citation needed D and D minus and the skeptic crowd available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawful movies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robson takes care of our social media. Our Theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot, Nick People's Drafts on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. God is still workshopping the whole Middle East plan. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Moses would go on to force feed ground up gold to all of those people except the ones he had killed. Turns out that milk and honey would be a lot less relevant than crude oil. Huh? You call this a baracholi? Broccoli. Well, that's why there's Hello Fresh. Hello Fresh. <laughs> <Sorry>. you cho- <laughs> I, I, I hit the mouse and scrolled away my page, and I was like, "Oh, I don't know what do I say there." <laughs> it was the simplest line, obviously. All right. <laughs> yes. I'll give you baracholi again. Okay. I was waiting for Eli to start the. Uh... The Zencast required. It didn't take me that long to remember which number came. He first. forgot which number came first. He told he that when the record was off, he was crying and begging us to tell him, but we wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> so he Googled it. He Googled <laughs> what number comes first. Wait, now I want to Google that. I want to add that to the algorithm. Which number comes I'm gonna bing integers. Oh, uh, comes first? There's it it auto completes which number comes next. It does tell you. Okay, yeah. There you go. Cardinal and ordinal numbers chart. I have this new magic trick where um I can secretly enter a word into my phone and my phone sends it to a little pocket printer and prints out a photo of whatever I entered. Right? Oh, which is nice. pretty cool because I can then sneak that into an envelope and be like, a banana, you say, and then I open it. Except what I have learned recently is that it doesn't have a safe surf function. Oh, no. So if, for instance, someone says banana, you better fucking peek at that because it's going to be a girl deep throating a banana. Now, <laughs> luckily, I was with friends and people who were ch- chill. But the moment of doing that in front of a client would have been real bad. <laughs> and you see here I have a sex crime. <laughs> I have nothing. I'm a bad magician. Bye. <laughs> Don't hire me anymore. Here's a high five. <laughs> Anyways, I, I, happy bat mitzvah, little yes. girl. <laughs> Half a banana. This is actually an important. It's an important skill. Get off me. It's an important skill. <laughs> Don't worry. You won't be doing that. So. <laughs> you are Jewish. That's true. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved. We want students to know that if they go to Kent State, they have the world a la carte as an opportunity for them to develop a true global perspective.